Over the ages, man has used water power to simplify many physical tasks. The most common application of hydropower has been on a huge industrial scale, which has resulted in the centralization of power generation with enormous dams and reservoirs. When you hear about renewable power, you generally hear about technologies of large wind farms, which are again centralized power, generating on a massive scale, and huge solar arrays, which are of the same utility grade scale. I have said before that the movement of water on Earth is the largest movement of mass on Earth and something we would be wise to capture. When hydropower is mentioned, it is usually said that the resource has already been maximized. There is seldom any mention of microhydropower as a decentralized and viable means of harnessing electric capacity. In this video, I'd like to discuss how I became proficient in the process of harnessing power from water. My own journey with microhydropower generation began in the early 90s. We were fortunate to locate a remote off-grid property in Colorado which had abundant water flowing over it. In the last 26 years, we have harnessed microhydropower with two very different yet very similar systems. The first system we installed in 1996 was supplied with spring water collected from two separate springs and transported in nearly a mile of four inch pipe. It was a direct drive system because we had adequate pressure and it also fed a pond where we could raise trout. After 18 years of use, the springs began to lose the abundant flow due to an extended mega drought in the west and the installation of a pond which may have directed water away from our underground aquifer which fed our springs. In 2013, we decided to make a substantial investment to upgrade the system by moving to a creek which ran on a piece of land which we purchased in the mid-90s. The new system would have a far greater output of power utilizing the original Pelton turbine and generator we had purchased in 1996. That is how the Mr. Hydrohead YouTube channel came into being. And in over 20 videos, we chronicled in detail the two-year process of designing and building a new powerhouse, building a new 6-inch penstock, which would carry up to 300 gallons per minute, and also required a bridge we built across the creek. We created a new collection system in our upper meadow, and installed a new power transmission line with a 480 volt transformer in the house. We also installed beneficial ways to put the power to use, supplying all our power needs. How did I feel confident enough to know that moving to the second system would work? In 1993, I was fortunate to discover and attend a course specific to microhydro at a place called Solar Energy International. It gave me a broad and solid basis of knowledge, and the instructors actually helped me design my first system and get a good deal on the equipment I would need. This past spring, I decided to re-attend the updated course at SEI. Their facility is located in Peonia, Colorado, where they offer classes primarily focusing on solar education and certification. However, they also offer this class in microhydro training. The course is taught by Ken Gardner, who is the licensed engineer you've seen in other videos on this channel, and Gabe Stevens, who has worked with Ken on many numerous and varied projects. I was pleased to see how detailed and comprehensive the new microhydro course was. It went into depth on every aspect of analyzing, locating, designing, and installing the necessary components of a microhydro system. There is a good amount of classroom instruction where the practical methods of measuring head and determining accurate measurements of flow are explained. There is discussion of various kinds of turbines and when it is best to use each of these designs. Systems for AC load control DC charging of batteries, and diversion loads are also explained. Some of the best information provided are the pitfalls and mistakes to be avoided. 
All of this instruction is not just theoretical, but is followed up with hands-on instruction in the many techniques of determining accurate head measurements, along with several methods of measuring flow with specialized equipment and other more simple techniques. This practical lab work extends to demonstrating how different types of microhydro equipment are installed, adjusted, tested, and how they function. There are numerous site visits to installed functioning systems in the local area where the principles presented in the classroom are examined in real-world applications. The owners of the systems discuss how they were installed and how they operate. It's an opportunity to see a wide variety of installations. For me, it was a pleasure to meet other people who had taken the initiative to install their own systems. I strongly urge anyone looking to install a system to avail themselves of this very comprehensive training. Attending this course is what gave me the knowledge and the confidence to install both of my systems. You can likely avoid making a wide range of mistakes, which can be both frustrating and very costly. All of this takes place amid the beauty and splendor of Western Colorado. On this channel, I have recently begun to locate and document other systems which are not my own. I will continue to do this, and if you are new to the channel, I invite you to subscribe, comment, and most importantly, hit that bell icon to be notified of new uploads.